we still have J. Franklin Jitubor in the house. That name suggests that you're from the Niger Delta, right? <laughs> yeah, well. Wow. <laughs> south, so, south. <laughs> can you be that? And you look very Western, you know, from the Western region of uh, well, Nigeria. Well, it depends. Has anybody told they, you that? Uh, people tell me a whole lot. They tell me I'm from the, I look like a northerner. Some tell me I look like a Yoruba boy. Some you tell know, me you I could actually, they put you as Desmond Elliot's um, oh, brother on. on set. <laughs> you could pass like a younger come brother. Come on. <laughs> Why? Do I Somehow, look like I don't know. For some reason, I think you do. Well, you some never, people have said that, that though. Okay. Some people have said um, RMD. Some people have said... Oh, you're being ambitious. Uh, no, I'm not RMD. being ambitious. <laughs> people have said different things, so okay. it depends on, on how you see me and how I'm looking at the time. If I shave my beard now, I look different. Yeah, definitely. From ah. time to time, I let it grow, I cut it. But in 2014, for some reason, I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of going back and forth. Let me just let it grow. Oh. And it has since then become you an identity mm. because uh, my film logo, uh, New Black Ellie Films, it's a logo, of, it's a portrait of me with the beards and the glasses. So hmm. it stayed. But I might cut it sometimes. Okay. Know. You know, some people would <laughs> they would do anything to look younger. And you're doing everything to look older. It's not like I'm doing everything to look older. I mean, I like to look young. But I left it at this point, not because I was trying to make myself look old or trying to impress anybody. But, mm. you know, just because I felt like, okay, you know what, let me just leave the beard. Wow. Wow. Interesting. All right. That's taken care of. Yeah. You are a filmmaker and you seem to have uh, put your hands in different uh, the different strands in the filmmaking business. Yep. You're a writer. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're also into film production. Yep. Well, for me as a writer, it's something I've always done as a child growing up. As in, um, I remember the days of NTA, Tales by Moonlight. Mm -hmm. It was huge for us because it was the only time we could sit down and hear stories about actually re re reenacted stories with puppets and the rest of the tortoise and the story of the lion and the kangaroo and it were pretty interesting to us and mm. we used to have our sessions where we sit down as, as kids and tell stories so who could tell the best story was the question who could hold the audience for long and make them want for more like ah so what happened next okay what not happened to this one what happened so that was the thing for us as kids and that went on for a while we started drawing comic books that means creating characters creating stories and backstories because you cannot come and say oh i have this superhero and they ask you because i had friends like that how did this superhero get the power and then you have to tell a backstory okay this happened and that happened and eventually he got this power so that went on and at a point in your life, you have to decide, okay, am I going to be that serious student that my parents want me to be, which means do all the sciences, the chemistry, physics, and dump all these talents I've been given. And yes, it happened. But fast forward so many years after, I decided to go back to writing. And then I wrote a couple of novels, unpublished, don't ask mm -hmm. me why personal <laughs> personal Reason. reasons because uh, they're somewhat political and okay um, and then I realized that people don't read that much like they used to hmm. in my generation I'm okay. talking about in the, the 80s present. 90s they don't read that much okay these days so I'm like okay it's best I start telling my stories visually hmm. and that means taking the story I would have written out as a novel and making it into a film okay so that birthed the process of me becoming a filmmaker and um, once I did my studies, learned how to write screenplay because writing a novel is different from writing a screenplay. And I mastered that process. I realized that the entire process of making a film is actually storytelling. So from the screen, script, to the directing and the editing. And the thing, the last thing any storyteller or writer would want to do is give somebody their film, their story to tell and tell it wrongly. Hmm. So I went back and I studied more on directing. Okay. And it became easier for me. So writing, directing comes easily. Well, uh, the rest is what you learn while trying to make your first film. So making my first film, I learned the other processes, which means producing, managing schedules and all that, and managing actors. So we can safely say watching those um, stories from the Tales by Moonlight and the, your own Tales by Moonlight you had in your own corner um, inspired you into writing. Yeah, and not just that, 
filmmaking. Yeah, it did. How amazing. Yep. I mean, small, small little things we take for granted, right? You never know because um, as kids, we had dreams and most of those dreams seemed silly at that time. Bogus. Because they were like, uh, you go and sit down, you go and learn, become an accountant or go become an engineer or doctor or lawyer because those were the things that we saw as successful at that time. Mm. So people wouldn't look at an entertainer like, oh, he's successful mm. or a writer or a filmmaker or Nobody knew what filmmaking was. They just saw actors and they felt, okay, actors are the successful ones because that's, those are the ones they see in front of the camera. But we had dreams. I always knew I was going to do stuff in entertainment. I was a rapper at one time, though. And like every, every youth, you want to experiment. So I did a couple of songs. I'm not going to tell you what, what happened to them. <laughs> but, and then um, it went on and on. But I knew I was going to be involved in entertainment how i was going to be involved i never knew i wanted to be an actor initially but i realized that in trying to grow a business and earn wealth you should do more than just being in front of the camera so that took me back behind the cameras that means producing creating the shows and all that was it something you calculatedly got into or is just Okay, let me try it a bit, let me try it a bit, and you just found yourself getting all wrapped up in this world of production. Well, I, I, when I say calculated, calculated, it was a calculated move. Well, in 2002 slash 2003, we started a record label. I always loved music, and I told you I did a couple of songs, so, and I wanted to start a record label, so I had a partner, and we did. But for some reason, it didn't quite work out, and that left me going back to do IT, which has always been one of my love, mm. computers and all that. And I left entertainment and everything that has to do with entertainment for about nine years. Okay. And then in 2011, um, it was like uh, um, an epiphany, what I call it an epiphany, or a point where I had to reflect and put things in perspective. perspective. And I'm like, okay, what would I really want to do when I'm sorted? That means when I have money and I just want to enjoy my life. Mm. And it has always been film. I'm like, okay, why don't I start doing that now? And for me to do that, I had to, okay, if I have to do film, I have to do it. I have to conquer my present environment. And in conquering my present environment, I have to understand how the present environment works. So I've always been a huge critic of Nollywood films because I felt that they could do more, but they weren't just pushing it because everybody was just interested with the business and what they could get in return. And then the art was suffering. So I'm like, okay, I wouldn't want to go on that same route. Mm -hmm. I want to do something that would quite raise the bar. Mm -hmm. So I, and the only way to go about that is to go study. So okay. I took a whole year. And I studied, read books on screenwriting because writing novels, like I said, is different from writing screenplay. Okay. Novel is internal. Yeah. Screenplay is visual. You have to see it. Mm. I can't read your mind. I can't That's true. tell what you've done before, but I have to show it or I have to put it in dialogue. So mm. I had to go study. And I did my 10,000 hours of studying screenplays, how to write screenplays, structure and rules. And after that, I studied how to direct. And by the time I was done doing all that, I felt I was ready. And I had to plan, like, okay, what is my strategy? Five years, 10 years, what do I intend to do in this industry? Is it just make a film for film's sake or as a career and as a business? Uh, okay. Which is basically what it's turned out, it's turning out and it's turned out to be. Hmm. Did you have any kind of encouragement from any support system from loved ones, family? Well, like or they just thought you like, were crazy? Like everything, like every artist. Well, some people support. I had support from my older brother. I had support from... My dad has always supported my writing. But, uh, as a filmmaker, you know, it gets, it gets to a point in your life as a Nigerian where your parents expect you to be doing certain things. That means, oh, you should be working. Yeah. You should have a job. You should, you should have a car. Living. You should be earning money. And mm -hmm. it's crazy because... It's either one or two things. It's either you're earning money, you're earning money as a salary. It's either you're working or you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. It's either you are a salary receiver or you are an entrepreneur. I had to choose. Wow. For me, being an entrepreneur has always been my life. I never fancied 
working, working for, for somebody anybody else. else. And when I say working for somebody and waiting for the end, looking to, towards the 30th or the 31st of the month, it's okay, ah, salary, nah. Mm -hmm. I've always been about, okay, what can I create? How much can I make creating this? So uh, that for me, that was a huge problem for my family and my parents to understand because they'd be like, oh, you should get a job, you should do that. And for me, I just wanted to create. I want. I, I didn't like the idea of being boxed. Okay. Of being, because I, my, I, I tend to get lots of ideas and I like to experiment with those ideas. And if I find something that I really love to do, I will love to experiment in that field. So for me, the job I have right now, I won't call it a job because <laughs> it's not a job. It's more like a business. So wow. I could get to the office for nine or 10 and basically create and be productive mm. instead of running to a job by seven o'clock and leaving by five and I'm frustrated. Do you understand? Wow. But well it got to the point it starts to work and then everybody smiles like, Yeah, we always knew you had it in it. <laughs> <laughs> Where that happened. Were there moments in your life where you said, Come, I think I've made a mistake. Well, I think I should just retrace my stuff and uh, do the need for <laughs> But at well, times when you well, really, when you want well, to give up with every part you choose, there comes that time at the beginning where there is resistance. Okay. It's like you put a block on the floor. Mm -hmm. It's lying idle. Mm -hmm. There is no resistance. Nothing is stopping it from moving because it's not planning to move. All right. The moment you decide to push that block, the ground is a resistance because it's like, oh, why are you pushing why are you this? Moving it? And it's you have to struggle to push it yes. because the ground is holding it back. It's not smooth. It doesn't have tires, so it wouldn't roll easily. That is how every part you take is. So the moment you decide that, okay, I'm going to do this, first of all, there are forces around that will be like, okay, he's going in that direction. Let's see how it goes. And then there are family members, there are friends that are going to tell you that, man, are you sure this is what you want to do? Can you even do it? So like, like um, one, of, one, one entertainer I admire would say, they put their fears on you. So what they're afraid of, what they think that they cannot do, they put that on you and say, no, we don't think you can do it. It's impossible. I mean, well, maybe it worked for that person, but do you think he are cut out for this? Hmm. They tell you all sorts, and then if you get past that stage, you must have those pre periods of trials because they said the proof of desire is pursuit. Hmm. And even, I'm a Christian, and even with God, you have to prove to him that you need this thing. You want, really want this thing. So how much do you want it? Is he wanted for mouth's sake or, oh, I'm trying, ah, it's too hard, and you quit, and you go look for another thing to do. Then you don't really want it. When the trials come, when the challenges come, you have to stay on your cause. And when you can stay on your cause, trust me, the reward is always beautiful. Wow, wow. At so, least this will, this will um, serve uh, for good inspiration to yeah. those who need no, because it Because right basically, when I, when I was going to make my first short film, I had the script. I was looking for how much? Less than a hundred grand or two hundred grand. And everybody was like, ah, what is this? Is it gonna work? Blah, 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 blah. And I went ahead and I raised that money. I raised about 70 grand mm. to make that film. And as soon as I made that film, the same people came back and like, ah, I always knew you had it in you. <laughs> and, and hold this 200 grand, hold this 250 grand. And it, it's amazing what I got out from that project eventually. Wow. But the first day of shoot, I was like, God, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Oh, Shouldn't no. I just quit because it was insane? I can remember vividly, it was my birthday in 2013 and I was shooting my first scene in my first short film. And I'm like, should I just quit? But guess what, I get home and I go online to watch a, a film program like I always do called Film Riot. And the host goes like, ah, to all you new filmmakers, if you think making film is difficult and you're trying to quit, don't. Because we're going to show you something. This is Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan has, happens to be one of the biggest directors in Hollywood who made The Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, uh, the, the, dark, yes, the, the, yes. the Batman Begins, made Interstellar and everything. And they said this is the first film he ever made. It was a three minute short film of him trying to kill a bug. And it was crappy. And like, so if you're thinking of ending that career, don't. Think again. Because. Now he's grown to become one of the biggest filmmakers. And I was mm. encouraged. I went on, finished the project, and 
it's been on to the next from there. Okay, so now speaking of the works you have done, with all the screen, all the screen plays you've mm -hmm. written, how many have you been able to interpret? Well, um, I think I've been able to do about two or three of them because for me, it's not in the numbers, it's in the quality of what you're producing. Okay. So if I'm telling, like I tell people, tell a good story, people will come. I have script written, I have scripts that I've written. Okay. Over the years, I have the scripts I, read, I wrote in 2011 and 12. Okay. A complete TV series. Okay. 13 episodes. Hmm. But I've not shot one thing. Okay. I have the first feature length film I wrote in 2012. Mm -hmm. I've not even touched it. I had the one I wrote in 2013 that I thought was going to be the first film I was, I was going to shoot. I've not even touched it. <laughs> so from all indications, <laughs> you will be the one doing to, all your writing? Not necessarily. I like to write because that's my, that's passion. my passion. That's my strong point. That is my... Strong suit. My, my superpower. Okay. Do you understand? And... Uh, directing comes second nature to me. It's like writing as well. So putting all the pieces together, is, that's the most interesting part. So it's part of the storytelling process. But I, like, I've done two films for TV. I didn't write the script. Okay. But it was a fun process to actually direct something someone had written. Really? The first short film I made after my own personal film was for Ford Foundation. It has to do with religious intolerance, which is... It, was, it revolves around the crisis in jobs. And it was interesting for me because I had to understand where the writer was coming from. Hmm. I had to understand, okay, who is this character? What's this character going through? What's the story about? And once you can understand that, it's easy for you to try and interpret that story into hmm. a visual form. So, um, no, I don't always direct or write all my materials. I like to see good stories and I like to inter interpret them. Okay. Speaking of um, the works, how many do you have in the can? How many um, have you pushed I've out? I've done like two short films. I've done two films for TV commissioned, Ebony Life TV, and then I have this feature length film which I, I just premiered. So can you remind the viewers of those ones you've done? Okay, I've done um, my first short film. It's my film school, don't worry, it's not that spectacular. It's called Cut, Past Tense of Catch. Cut. Okay. You understand? And then I had Once, which is um, around religious intolerance. Then I have Be Say Secret, which is a film for TV. And then I have Once Upon a Wish, which is another film for TV. Then I have Dinner, which is wow. my cinema film. Wow. I like the way you capture the, the, the titles. It's yeah. really very catchy. Yeah. You, the thing about film and stories is that... <clears throat> From the title, your audience should be interested. Hmm. Do you understand? From the title, the audience should be interested. So that's basically what we're trying to do. Wow. So, dinner yeah. is the one on the front burner right now. Yep. What is it about? Dinner is a story about relationships, letting go of the past, and embracing the future. Hmm. Are you more of a romantic uh, writer? Would you say you're uh, more? A romance is inevitable because every story has some form of love in it. Okay. Either love for something, love for passion, love for whatever you're going to pursue, mm -hmm. love for the goals you're trying to achieve. So uh, romance is relative, for, but I like to write about love. I like to write about passion. Yeah? So dinner. Mm -hmm. Dinner, I saw quite an array of cast there. Yeah. How did you pull those people together? How long did you do story, it? Long story, long story. Cut it short. Like, three of the actors, I knew they were going to be in the project. The right. others, I auditioned. How did you, you have the backbone. You have somebody who is supporting you in the background? No. God? God. Wow. Wow. Yeah, That's interesting. Ask, so how did, you, how did you get them together? Like I said, tell, the a good, three. tell a good story, people will come. Hmm when they see a project that's worth it they will definitely want to be part of it so now moving forward dinner is here yeah. are we having breakfast and uh, lunch um it's supposed to in be the a trilogy but uh, i'm not saying much don't worry you'll find out <laughs> tease us now when you watch the film then you decide if there should be a sequel okay and there should be a trilogy eventually wow mm -hmm. really yeah and so beside this acting, uh, beside the script writing and production, is there something else? Is there any other thing you do? Well, this is basically 
So I, it's a business, so I'm a businessman as well. Okay. So there are other things uh, that will always come up. Consult for people. Okay. So yeah. what's your dream for the for the for the Nigerian movie industry? My dream is to have this industry grow to the point where filmmakers, writers, producers, and everybody working in the industry can hold their head high and say, "Yes, we are part of this production, and we end good money from working on this or creating this." Okay, guys, hoping that that dream come true. Definitely, it will come true. Very soon. Definitely. Because I'm sure a lot of people are waiting to reap the fruit of their labor. Definitely. Right? Definitely. It's going to come true. It's inevitable. Okay. So on that note, I want to say thank you so much for thank you, Tekla, for having me. Thank you very much.